In today's upload, we're going to focus on three horrific medieval and renaissance time serial killers. Let's begin. Many people believe that serial killers are a relatively new phenomenon, and that these homicidal maniacs are a terrifying byproduct of modern society's manic pace and lifestyle. Unfortunately, that's not the case. In fact, serial killers have existed for millennia, and will probably continue to exist, much to our dismay. Here are three serial killers that rampaged during the historically significant and turbulent eras of the Middle Ages and Renaissance. Christman Genepertenka During the late 16th century, a German killer named Christman Genepertenka wreaked terror upon the countryside just outside of Cologne. Apparently, this medieval killer slaughtered hundreds of people. Some historians have the body count at 946, but most agree that this is a grossly exaggerated number that has been inflated as a result of oral folklore. But the fact remains that this monster killed many, many innocent people. Christman lived in an underground home that was built into the beautiful landscape, and although his dwelling was apparently situated somewhat underground, the interior resembled a normal home for that time period. This psycho's underground lair was located at the intersection of some ancient Roman roads that connected several German cities. From his inconspicuous underground home, he was able to watch and stalk travelers as they traversed the remote area. After stalking his prey, Christman would randomly attack, murder, and dismember random voyagers who roamed across the ancient roads. Because he was known to attack groups of three to four people, many wonder if he had assistance from others. Christman's downfall came after capturing and imprisoning the daughter of a local barrel maker, an important job in that era. The prisoner eventually escaped, recalled the horrific ordeal to her influential dad, and the rest is history. The killer's home was eventually ransacked for evidence, during which time the local population uncovered years of clues concerning his year-long murderous and pillaging rampage. In June 1581, Christman was executed by the breaking wheel, an excruciatingly painful and barbaric medieval torture device. Catalina de los Rios y Lispinger Known as La Quintrala, due to her flaming red hair, Catalina de los Rios y Lisberger was a 17th century Chilean aristocrat, landowner, and cold-blooded killer. Hailing from Spain, Native American, and German descent, La Quintrala was a member of Chile's ruling class during the Chilean colonial period. La Quintrala owned and managed vast swaths of land, which were inhabited by South America's indigenous population and recent settlers from Europe. Unfortunately for her tenants, La Quintrella had an explosive and violent temper, which often resulted in cruel and inhumane treatment of her subordinates. Over the course of her wicked rule, La Quintrella brutally murdered over 40 people, including slaves, tenants, former lovers, a priest, and even her own father. Using her nobility and wealth to her advantage, this psychotic killer evaded justice for years despite the community's growing knowledge of La Quintrella's evil deeds. The horrific acts of La Quintrella eventually caught up with her, and she was publicly convicted of her murderous acts. As she was only sentenced to house arrest and not executed, many contemporaries believe that her punishment was much too lenient. Regardless, La Quintrala never received a harsher punishment, and she eventually died while still under house arrest. La 
Chola's notorious legacy still lives on in Chilean culture, where she is viewed as the embodiment of Spanish colonization and the resultant oppression. Resurrection Men, Broken Hair Killings Whenever you do research on serial killers, the bizarre and macabre details that emerge will cease to amaze. Here is one such instance. In the 1820s, Edinburgh, Scotland, there was a leading European city in the study of anatomy. In order to truly understand the human body, these pioneering scientists required lots and lots of test subjects, i.e. dead people. This high demand for cadavers led to a shortage of bodies on which to perform scientific experiments. So, whenever there is a demand, some resourceful folks will always manage to find a way to offer the supply. The first people to meet the ever-increasing demand for dead bodies were known as Resurrection Men. No, they did not rise from the dead. Rather, they were grave diggers who stole bodies and delivered them to area scientists. Under Scottish law, only certain dead bodies were allowed to be used for science, such as suicide victims and dead prisoners. So these so-called resurrection men and their scientist counterparts were most likely criminally liable for the rampant body snatching from the graves of respectable society. At this point, only dead bodies were being snatched. That all changed after the proprietor of a local boarding house was convinced to sell the body of the lodger who died at his inn. The proprietor was William Hare, and his friend was William Burke. Apparently, Burke knew of a scientist, Dr. Knox, who was in desperate need of cadavers. Within a few months, Heron Burke had resorted to murdering instead of waiting for lodgers to die through natural causes. Over the course of ten months in 1828, Burke and Hare killed 16 people. They murdered almost 20 people in less than one year, and it was all for one purpose to make some extra cash by selling murdered bodies for scientific experimentation. Some guests at the boarding house had suspected foul play after the death of their last victim, Margaret Doherty. This led to an investigation and the arrest of both men as well as their wives. Hare agreed to an immunity deal which involved selling out Burke who was eventually hanged for his crimes. Even though Burke was executed, Hare was never convicted. And neither were the wives, who eventually fled the United Kingdom. And so did Hare, apparently. But no one really knows for sure as to what happened to Hare. As for Burke, his body was dissected and his skeleton was put on display at the Edinburgh Medical School's Atomical Museum. To date, Burke's skeleton remains on display. Scotland swiftly enacted new laws that made it easier for doctors, medical students, and anatomy lecturers to acquire legal cadavers, thereby ending the reign of resurrection men. Zhu Shinatir Given the later crimes of Sushinatir in the 5th century AD, it's fitting that Aden, Yemen, Shinatir's city, has long been linked with the biblical story of Cain and Abel. Unlike Cain, the world's first murderer, Shinatir killed purely for pleasure. Exactly how many people he killed has never been recorded but records state that he was a wealthy pedophile who sodomized his victims and then killed them by throwing them out of a window. Shinatir is often incorrectly labeled as the first serial killer ever recorded. While that's not true, he's certainly one of history's first lust killers. A voracious appetite for sex 
seems to have linked Shinathir's driving motive, which makes his ultimate demise all the more fitting. According to certain sources, one of his intended victims, a young man named Zarash, stabbed Sinatar through his anus, thus giving the monster a taste of his own sick medicine. Peter Stump, a cannibal serial killer known as the Werewolf of Bedburg, Peter Stump was a one-armed farmer in 15th century Germany who reportedly killed 14 children and two pregnant women over the course of 25 years. After being caught, Stump not only admitted to drinking the blood of local livestock, but also claimed to have eaten fetuses as well as his own son's brain. Arguably, some of Stump's confession should be questioned considering that he made it all after being subjected to torture. However, he was still more than likely a serial killer and not the self-proclaimed victim of the devil, who viciously preyed upon villagers who were themselves under assault due to the rampaging sewer war, which pitted Catholics against the Protestants. In this regard, Stump eerily presages Marcel Pitot, the French serial killer who used the chaos of German occupation to carry out his multiple murders. Jasper Hanbuth It was Jasper Hanbuth's great misfortune to have come of age during the Thirty Years' War. Not only did Hanbuth take up arms during one of Europe's bloodiest conflicts, but he and other Europeans had to deal with the near-complete destruction of their farms, towns, and populations. But while others tried to rebuild their communities after the war, Hanbuth tapped into his former life as a mercenary for the Swedes in order to make a living as an outlaw. Hanbuth killed for pecuniary reasons, and after the completion of each crime, he would try to trade his ill-begotten gains with merchants all across Hanover. Hanbuth became such a legend in Hanover that even today, the city still grapples with his legacy. As with most infamous serial killers, Hanbuth was apprehended, tortured, and executed in 1653 for the deaths of 19 people. I hope you've enjoyed these cases, as I think they shed a little light that even back then there were still people that were as heinous or even more heinous than the serial killers of today. <laughs>